Okay. Hey everyone. So while preparing tomorrow's recitation, I was wondering what should I talk about? There is simplex network flows, which I thought we didn't talk about in recitation and we should because it's a lot of computations and it's a bit tricky. Then there is integer programming and that you started today, which is super important. So I also wanted to say a little bit about that. And robust optimization, which you talked about Tuesday and we also didn't have time to cover. But obviously these three things in one hour is just impossible. And I was like, why should I choose while I can just do all of them? And then what I can't cover, I'm just gonna record it and send it to you. And then hopefully that will be useful. So I'll try to make a recording now about network flow simplex. And then tomorrow I'll cover integer and robust. Hopefully one hour should be enough for these two. So look at this recording, please replay whatever is not clear. Uh, I hope I don't make any typos, although it's a little bit late at night, but hopefully it's gonna be clear. Um, and if you have any questions, please piazza or come to the office hour and I'll be more than happy to answer. Okay, let's go, network flows. So let me share my screen. Oh. Okay. So what I'll do is that I'll go over the same example as you've seen in the lecture, but I'm gonna go very much in detail about how we perform every single step of the simplex algorithms for network flows. And um, you can, you will also have to do it in the homework. So hopefully by these two things, you should become an expert. Okay, so in brief, in this one slide, I try to summarize the whole algorithm, everything that you need to know about the simplex network flow algorithm. And then what we will do is that for each, uh, for each step of the algorithm, I'm gonna go exactly over how to do this step. And I'm gonna do it in the example of the lecture. Okay, let me just outline it briefly and then I'm gonna go in detail in every step. So first thing you choose an, an initial basic tree solution. I'm gonna talk more in detail about that. You compute the flow of the solution. Again, I'm going to talk about that. Then the potentials, then the reduced cost. Then you find some edge with the negative reduced cost. You enter this edge into your solution and then you repeat. Nothing is clear for now, but don't worry. I'm going to go uh, through everything. Just one thing that I want you to notice is that there's multiple things we talk about. So potentials, reduced costs, and then we also have costs. So see. And then we'll also have flow, so F. So we have a fifth thing, I remember there is five things, uh, and then the balances. So there's many things we will play with in this algorithm, and you should just keep in mind that this, there's these five things which are different. You need to know the relationship between them, and we'll cover exactly that. Okay, let's go. So this is the problem we consider. So this slide is the data that we have, the problem, information, which are the costs and the balances. Okay, this is what is given to us. And then, as I said, there is three other things we will play with that will allow us to know how to perform the iterations of the simplex in network flow, which are, and let me write them with different color, so it's nice. Um, so they are the uh, potentials, potentials, which will denote PI, and we're gonna see this a little bit later. Then the other things is the reduced cost, which is C bar. And then, of course, the flow, which will denote F, okay? So five different quantities, and whatever we write on the edges or in the squares will correspond to something different. So here, what is written on the edges are the costs. And then what is written in the squares are the balances. So the balances are these BIs, which is what kind of comes inside every edge, every uh, vertex, every node, okay? This is the outer flow that comes in or out of every edge, which means here, there is a plus one unit of flow that comes out in here. Here, there is plus three that comes, comes in comes in, I meant. So here minus four, which means there's minus four that comes out of it, okay? So cost balances, this is what we just discussed. Then the potentials, I'm gonna discuss this more in detail soon. 
reduced cost, which is the same as the reduced cost as we've seen before. Um, uh, although in network flows, they have particular meanings and they are nicely interpreted. On the flow is the solution, is the variable that we play with, is what is going to go in this edge. This is the cost, and the flow is what's going to flow in this edge. And imagine water flowing on pipes. Okay. Okay, let's go. So, first step choosing an initial basic tree solutions. And here I should mention that why do we call this basic solution? Because a tree solution is exactly what we talked about as being a basic solution in, uh, in regular optimization problems. In regular optimization problem, a, a tree solution, a basic feasible solutions, which is also a vertex, remember that, okay? Now, when we look at network flows, which are also linear optimization problems, so which are also, let me write it, so network flows can also be represented as, sorry, as linear optimization problems, right? And then what is a vertex, a basic solution in linear optimization problem is a basic tree solutions in network flows, okay? So it's just, this concept of basic solution, we can, we can visualize it in network flows. We can see what it is. And it is exactly these basic tree solutions. Okay. So what is a basic tree solution? So again, when I put something in red, which means this is a step we are doing now on the coming slides. So I choose a tree in my graph here, which is for example, the red one here. What is a spanning tree? So what is a tree? Uh, Patrick mentioned this already, but let me say that again. A tree is some subset of the edges of the graph, like here, the red ones, that does not contain a cycle. What is a cycle? A cycle is some collection of edges for which you can literally cycle. Just you can start from one node and get back to the other node without going twice through, every, through any of the edges. So a tree is a subset of the edges that does not contain any cycle. See here, this tree does not contain any cycle, only the red edges. And a spanning tree is a tree that will go over all the nodes of the graph. See here, every node that I have has the tree going through it, okay? So first step of the algorithm, I choose a, a tree in my graph and a tree correspond exactly to a BFS. Oh, sorry, BFS. Yeah, I'm a little bit sleepy. <laughs> I will have a lot of typos. Hopefully not a lot, but yeah, forgive me if there's typos. Um, so trees, and this is the network flow view. Oh, let's do this like this. And this is the LP view, linear problem view. So tree is a BFS. So what we're saying here, I'm choosing a, a tree in my graph, which is basically I'm choosing a BFS, which is I have my uh, polyhedron and I'm choosing an extreme point. That's what basically I'm doing. So first step of network flow simplex, I choose a tree solution. Basically, I just choose a tree, which I did here, the red ones, okay? Great, first step done. Now, next step, next step, I compute the flow in this tree solution. So here I just chose the tree, but I don't know what the flow is on every edge. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna compute the flow, okay? Let's do it together before seeing this. I mean, together, yeah, I'm alone in my room, but imagine we're all together. Um, so let's compute it. So how do we compute it? And so I didn't wanna have this two. Let's first know why we'll have the two. So imagine now I just have this tree and I don't have these edges because when I have a tree solution and I want to look at the solution associated to it, BFS, remember that the non-basic variables are zero. Same here, the non-basic variables are the edges that are not in the tree. So I set them to zero. So these are gone, forget about them. Now I just have the tree and I need to compute the flow. And the cool thing is when I have the tree, the flow is imposed on it, and let's understand why. So what's gonna happen? What is gonna be blue? So the flow is gonna be in blue. So what's gonna happen? Here on this edge here, 
four, I have plus two balances coming inside. And because of conservation, think again as water running a pipe, the water that comes here cannot go here because this is zero, this is not in the tree. So it has necessarily to go here. It needs necessarily to go from this pipe. So this is gonna be a two. The flow here is necessarily two because I have two units of water coming here. So it has to live from here by conservation because the node cannot keep any water in it. Okay. Now, same here. I have plus three that comes inside. So it necessarily has to come out of this edge because these two edges don't take any flow. They are not in the tree uh, feasible solution. So this is gonna be three. Now, both of these come inside, okay? So three, no, the node three receives three units of water, two units of water and one external unit of water. So the total that has to come outside of it will be exactly six which is one plus two plus three, six, okay? So you have to start from the leaves, like these ones with just one edge because it will give you the solution in this edge because this edge is forced to be something that will correspond to this, same here and same here. For example, I can also do already uh, these ones here and here. So this one, I have minus four that have to leave from here. So what has to enter is also four necessary, okay, by conservation. If four leaves from here and nothing goes out from these pipes, so this pipe has to bring me four units of water. Same here, I have three that comes inside, so three has to leave, okay? So here's gonna be three. Now the remaining one is this one. I have three that comes here, plus one, so I need four, uh, to come outside of it. And let's see if this makes sense. This makes total sense. Why? Because I did the last one, four comes in, four comes out, six comes in, six comes out. See the total that comes out, which is four plus six, uh, yeah, four plus six, so 10 is equal to what comes in, six plus four. Great, I have my flow. Uh, and then I can verify if it's correct because, I mean, if you roll the slides, it's going to construct. And I think I have exactly this, yeah? Oh, okay. So if I could do it at 11 a.m., 11 p.m., you probably can do it on a good day in a homework or in a final or in something. Okay. Uh, then I have my flow. So what is the next step? We did this. We did this. Next step is computing the potentials. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about what are these potentials. So what are the potentials? Now, again, think as water in, in pipes. The potentials are the dual variables. And the nice thing here, again, the very cool thing is that these dual variables of the flow have a meaning. So the meaning of the potential, think as every node, right? Every node has some height. Right, some altitude. Yeah, altitude is a good word, some altitude. Now, if I am in a high altitude and I go in a node of low altitude, then the water will easily flow, okay? And the potentials model that, right? Think of these pipes, these nodes. So potential is essentially, I'm gonna change color. Let's do that. So potentials are essentially altitude. Think as you have an edge that is high up a mountain and then an, a node that is lower. So here the flow will be much easier. And we'll see, we'll get more this intuition. So now more practically, how do I compute the potentials when I have my solution? So just before saying that's one remark when you do the network simplex yourself in a paper, my advice, and I mean, there's many ways of doing it, but my advice is the following. Um, always have two things represented, two network flows. One is your problem. So see here, my balances are in my problem, and then I'm gonna also write my costs. Well, let me put it in my other screen to copy the costs. Okay, I'm gonna also write the costs here. I'm gonna write them in, in uh, this color. 
So minus two, two, and here is going to be one, then three, then minus four, minus three, five, minus six, seven. This is cost. So here, in this one will be the one that is going to be fixed. You're not going to draw it again. This is um, your data problem. So I have I represent here the costs, the balances. Okay, so balances, the costs, and the flow. So the flow will change with my iterations, but the costs and the balances will not change. And I will need to look at these to modify things in my uh, network when I do the iterations. So my advice is keep this like keep one like this. This is maybe in your problem sheet, and then keep modifying the flows. These red ones here, as as soon as you you like progress, you can have a pencil, erase it, and then modify them. You can also draw it again if you want to keep it, which is better. But if you want to do it faster, you can just erase the flows and then write them like modify them with the iterations of the algorithm. And in the right one, you will have represent the potentials and the cost, the reuse cost. And we'll see, we'll do this together. Okay, what did I forget? I hope nothing. So now I have this on my left, I have this on my right, this I'm gonna draw multiple times, this I'm gonna have fixed and just change the flow in there. So here, now I wanna find the potential. So how do I find the potentials? The rule and the law that you're going to use. Okay, let me erase this. I don't need it anymore. So, what are you going to use? You're going to use these properties that's in, in the tree and only in the tree. I have that Cij is equal to Pi minus Pj. This is my cost, which I have. And this I don't. Now, because PIs are the, oh, PJ, because PI, PJ are the altitude, it doesn't really matter if I add a constant to all of them, right? If I shift all my, all my mountains up or down, it doesn't really matter. The relative difference between them matter. So what I can do is that I can fix one of them to zero to compute the others because they are defined within a constant. And for those of you who do physics, uh, these potentials are literally the potentials that you know in, in uh, in mechanics, uh, the energy and the potential. For those of you who did some physics, you, you have probably seen that. So this is literally uh, the potential energy uh, related to that, which is kind of the heights that you have and the altitude. And also in electricity, this would correspond to the tension, essentially. So tension U. Yeah, just take now a second to realize how cool it is just to link all of these things in a very rigorous way, network flows, uh, watering pipes, uh, electricity, mechanics, uh, cinetic energy can also be explained with the flow, et cetera, uh, which, yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna spend more time on this, but it's just really cool to think that all of these things are essentially just network flows. Okay, let's go back to what we were saying. So potentials, we start by fixing one of the potentials, which is basically we're fixing the constant in which I define my potential. So first step, again, if you don't want to understand the details, just first step, you fix one of them to zero, which I chose to fix this one to zero. So the P of this one is zero, this one. Now to compute the other ones, I just use my formula. So say I want to compute the ones of seven. I look at the cost in this edge, which is minus six. And I know that this minus six should be equal to pi minus pj, origin minus uh, the n, right? So p, so I know that pi, which is here, will be equal to cij plus pj. Okay, this is what you want to use, cij plus pj. And so let me just double check that I get it right. So Pij, Pi, again, the i is the one in the origin of the edge, right? So this one is equal to the cost plus the one that it arrives to, okay? So this one 
origin is equal to Cij, the cost plus the one it drives to. Now I read the cost in the other one, which is here minus six. So minus six plus zero. And I get minus six here. <clears throat> okay. Again, let's do it again. We have many edges, so we'll do it many times. Um, let's compute this one. So the origin zero is equal to the cost plus pj. So here I have I have one at the end of the edge. So pj will be equal to pi minus cij. pi is zero. Cij here is five. So this will be equal to minus five, right? So minus the cost here, because I am in the arrival here, I'm at the j, not the i. So pi zero minus cij, so minus five. Let's do it once again for, the, for number three. So three is a, is a pi because this is the origin, okay? So pi is equal to cij, the cost, which is here three plus pj minus five. So three minus five is minus two. And this is what I have, okay? And then you just do the same thing for each one of them, okay? Okay, let's do it one more time. I have plenty of time. Okay, I still have some time. Um, so four, it's a PI because it's the origin. So it's gonna be equal to the cost here, which is minus two, and then plus this one, which is minus two, so minus four. Okay. And then you do the same calculations and then you will get, well, before getting there, and then you will get, let me see, minus one and then minus one. So what is the interpretation of these potentials? Uh, I mean, why, for example, how do you understand intuitively this formula? It's just saying that the cost is kind of the hardness of going through this pipe. And the hardness of going through this pipe is a difference of altitude, okay? For example, to go from an altitude of minus two to minus five, I go down. So my cost is gonna be, um, let's see, so this is gonna be uh, two, <clears throat> so I look at the difference of potential, uh, which is three, which kind of quanti quantifies how hard it is to go through this pipe. If I'm going really down or if I'm going really up and the potentials quantify that, uh, uh, potentials quantify that. So for example, here to go through this, this is, um, let me see in terms of sign if I'm saying the right thing. You know, the cost from going from here to here is kind of quantified by the difference of altitude between these two, right? So this is why we have exactly this equality. The cost of going through this edge is equal to the difference of height, which is how hard it is to go through it or how actually easy it is to go there. And here it's kind of easy to go there uh, because I'm going from something minus two to something more down minus five, or so maybe the opposite, I mean, in terms of sign, but you get the idea, it's just the, the idea that I wanna transmit to you is that this intuition of this is how hard or easy is it to go through through these pipes, okay? Because if I'm, I have a lot of difference of altitude, the cost is gonna be higher uh, or lower if I'm going really down or really up. Okay, I said this too many times. Okay, potentials, we got them. Um, now, next step. So remember what we did. We chose initial three solutions and we did the following. We computed the flow and the solutions, then we computed the potentials, and now we're going to compute the reduced costs. Okay. But let's see how we did that. Now I just rewrote the potentials here. Oh, and let me get the costs again. Sorry, I should have written them in the slides. Let me get the costs again. Okay, so minus two, one, two, or minus two, two, minus three, minus three, 
minus four, five minus six, seven. And here you might wonder, well, I mean, why didn't you just write this in LaTeX to reduce cost? And I can tell you that drawing these things in LaTeX is a nightmare. You never want to do that. So I thought I'm just going to write them by, by hand, even though I would modify some of the stuff, but it's really nice to write these things and then do nice colors and everything. So the person who created this plus, I think Patrick, um, did a good job. OK, enough digression. Let's get back to what we were saying. Oh, reduce costs. I should have a bar here. So reduce costs. Let's go to the different color, the pink of reduce costs. Now, how do I compute reduced cost? Now I have the potentials. So the potentials along the three solutions are exactly corresponding to the cost. Now, in the other edges, they're not going to be corresponding to the cost, and there's going to be a mismatch between the cost and the difference of potential. And then what I'm going to do is intuitively, I'm going to choose the edge for which the potentials tell me it's beneficial for me. I mean, I compare the costs relatively to the potentials, which means how hard it is to go through the edges. And if it's good for me relatively to the cost, if it's cheap, uh, if, if like I'm going to go up a lot and it's cheap, then I'm going to choose this edge compared to the other solution. But let, let's see this more in detail. So let's compute the reduced cost. So first, in the edges of the tree solution, reduced cost is by definition zero. Let me actually write first the formula. So the formula is Cij is equal to um, Ci, Cij. Let me actually just double check. Cij minus Pi minus Pj. You see what I just said? I compare reduced cost. Tell me kind of if it's a good direction or not. Remember in this simplex. Now in network proof standard interpretation, I see the cost of going from I to J versus how hard it is to go from I to J, the potential, the difference of altitude. And I compare these two to see if it's worth it to take this cost. If it's negative, which means negative, means that the difference of potential is bigger than the cost. So it's worth paying this cost to go that high, right? So I'm going like in a ramp, PI, PJ, and this is the cost of going there. And if, if I'm going really high and I'm paying not too much, which is this is negative, then I, I better take up this edge. This is what we're going to see. So this formula tells me that the reduced cost in all the three edges are zero. And let's see why it tells me that. It tells me that because remember how we computed these. We compute them exactly by, with the formula that uh, pi minus pj is equal to cij. If you look at the previous slide, we use pi minus pj is equal to cij. So that is zero. You don't need to think about that. Just think that when you compute the reduced cost in this step, you just set all of this to zero in, the, in your three feasible solution. OK? Now, the remaining ones are the gray ones, the ones that are not in my tree. How to compute the reduced cost of this? So how to recompute the reduced cost of this? Good question. Let's do that. What we do is exactly we just apply the formula. And let's do it. So C, let's compute for this one, for example, Cij. I take the cost, 7, minus the difference of potential, which is here pi minus pj is minus 1 uh, minus minus 6, so minus 1 plus 6, which gives us 5. So 7 minus 5, so it's going to be uh, 2. And let's see if I give you the right thing. Yes, 2. OK, so two. And then let's do the same thing here. The cost is minus 3. See how useful it is for me to have this graph next to me when I do this computation. So my minus 3. The difference of potential is 0 because this minus this minus this is 0. Remember, pi minus pj, pi minus pj, this is 0. So 0 minus 3 minus 0, so minus 3. That's correct as well. And then here, pi minus pj minus 4 minus minus 1, so minus 4 plus 1, which is 3. So here I have a 3. Here I have a 2 for the cost. So 2 minus 3 is minus 1. Oh, wait, I made a mistake. Oh, no, this is 2 minus 
And here I have a minus three, so two plus three actually, which is five. Oh, good that I have the backup slide in front of me to check if I tell you the right things. Okay, so you computed the reduced cost. And now what we do is we just look at all these reduced costs, like in the other simplex, and we find the one that is negative. What is the edge that is worth taking when I flow my water in my pipes, right? Here basically it tells me that the cost of going here is three units less than the gain that I get uh, by how high I get when I take this edge. Okay, this leads me to my next step, which is I find some edge with the negative reduced cost. So this edge, I better take it in my solution. I better not put a flow equal to zero here, which is what I'm doing here because it's not in my tree. So I find one and if I can't, if all of them were positive, if I couldn't, which means there's no edge that is beneficial for me to take. Like in the simplex, there is no direction that is good for me to take, so I'm at optimal. So if everything was positive, I am at optimal. Now, if not, which is the case here, I have something negative, so I can take this edge and enter it in my basis. So I take this edge and I enter it in my basis. So what does it mean, entering basic network flow? Again, it's a really nice thing, which is this circulation, which I'm going to talk about right now. Let's do this. So this edge is good. I have to introduce in my basis. So how do I introduce in my basis? I have the, remember what I have here is the flow. Again, think of the cost as written here, but I don't write it here because I don't need it. But normally you should keep writing the cost and the flow. So what I do is, now I'm going to add this edge. Now when I add this edge, I don't have a tree anymore because I have a cycle. This will always happen. Whenever you add an edge to a tree, it's going to become a cycle. So what I'll do is that I, I'll, I'll, I'll push flow in this cycle until one of the edges becomes zero. Remember, these are my flows, right? These are my flows. Now I know this is the one that I entered. So you don't need to ruin your drawing here. Don't touch it. But just imagine that this is what's happening. There is a flow running here. So I have a cycle. I run flow through this cycle. What's going to happen? When I run it through the cycle, this one will increase because I run in this direction. This one will decrease because my flow is going the opposite direction of the edge. This one will decrease too, opposite direction. And this one too will decrease. So if I do it in one step, again, I'm going to just write here, but you shouldn't do it. I'm just doing it to show you what's going to happen. First step, this is going to become a one. I run one unit of flow. This is going to become three because it's going to be reduced by one, five, two, right? Uh, if it is not clear, just replay it. And good that I'm recording this one. And I chose actually to record this one and not integer because this needs a little bit more focus, I think. So that's, I just run one unit of flow. Now I will keep doing it until one of them becomes zero. So again, if I increase my flow in this, in this circuit, in this cycle by one, this is gonna become two, right? This is gonna become two as well. It's gonna be reduced because it's the, the other direction. This is gonna become four and this is gonna become one. And then I keep doing it. Again, it reduces, it becomes three, one, three, zero. Now I did it step by step, but in reality, what you should do is directly you will say, I will put flow here, and then this one decreases, this one decreases, this one decreases, which the first one that will get to zero, it's this one. This will become zero, this will become three, because I will run three units of flow three, so this one becomes zero and this one becomes one, okay? I run it in this cycle until one of them gets to zero, which is here. So I don't really care about the values of the flow. What I care about is which one becomes zero. And here it's this one, which means basically this edge is gonna leave the basis and this edge is gonna enter. Again, I do not write these in my graph in practice, I'm going to erase, but you can see it again by replaying the video. In practice, what I see is that I'm like, OK, I run this here. This one will become 0. This will leave the, the basis. This will enter the basis. This is all I need to know. All I need to know is that this enters the basis. No, 
uh, weights. No. This enters the basis, and this leaves the basis. So what I'll do is that this I keep again with the costs. This I will draw again with the new basic solution, basic tree solution, which is the next step. Um, wait, I need something. Oh, no, OK. So which is this step here, which is I enter the edge of the flow. So I get to a new tree solution. See what happened here? This one went out, and this one went in. So what I'm going to do here, I just take this and I rewrite it as here. I'm going to just rewrite a new flow with a new edge with the new edge in the tree and then one that left. And what happens is that I just repeat all these steps that I just did. Right? So I have now a new tree solution. See that this slide is exactly the same one as the first slide that I showed you. I do the same thing. I um, compute the flow. Now I have a new tree solution. So a new flow, I compute the flow. So I compute the flow, then I get the potentials. Then I get the reduced costs. And then I find if there is some reduced costs that is negative, the new basic variable, basic edge that will enter, et cetera, et cetera, until until for all ij, cij will be positive, OK? So again, maybe you will do all these steps. And then when you arrive here, everything will be positive. And you'll be like, done. I'm done. I found the optimal solution, OK? See again. So let's summarize again the steps. We choose an initial tree solution. We compute the flow, compute the potentials, compute the reduced cost. This is all just mechanical computations. We find some edge that is negative. If not, no, no edge is negative, it's all reduced costs are positive, then I'm done. Otherwise, I find one. I enter it in the basis by doing this flow circulation. And then I get a new basic solutions, and then I start again. OK? And this is the simplex. It's a little bit fastidious to do the calculus, but once you know how to do it and you do it properly, it's actually kind of fun in a certain sense. OK, what should I tell you else? Yeah, just to do this, very important advice. Just try to be very organized, have a very mechanical way of doing it in your mind. And my advice is to do this thing, where you have two. One that you will keep rewriting, which is whenever you change your basics, your tree solution, you write a new one. And then you do all the modifications there, which is you write just the potentials and the cost. And one, which you don't change, which has the cost and the balances, Right, like here, costs and balances. And what you will do each time is that whenever you change your tree solution, you will just erase these and then write the new flows that you found. OK? Let me summarize it again. And then if something is not clear, feel free to replay the video. Um, so first, you will write this here without the flows, because you don't have them, right? Here, you'll write it with the basic solution and nothing written in there, because you don't have a potential cost. Then you compute the flow. Because you have the tree, you compute the flow, you write it here, OK? Your first flow is here. Then using the flow and the cost, you will compute reduced cost potentials. You have the tree solution. You will introduce a new variable. You have a new tree. Now you have a new tree. So what you will do is that, OK, this is done. I'm going to draw a new one with the new tree. And then in here, once I have the new one in the new tree, I can find a new flow. And then here, I'm going to just remove these little flows here. And I'm going to replace them with a the new flow. And then I keep going, OK? OK, so this is what I wanted to show you uh, for network flows. Uh, I hope this is useful. Please ask any questions in Piazza if you'd like, uh, and also come to the office hours. I will not be here next week. I'm going to go to a conference, but I'll be back on Friday office hour normally. And I'll try my best, my best, my best to answer Piazza, even though if I'm, I'm not here these days. OK, I um, hope you enjoyed.